Welcome back to That's Number One. Before we get started with our usual video, um, I got two shout outs to make. One, um, shout out to Lonely as Night, I think that is, um, a subscriber that commented on a video asking about the new quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, and I will have an episode out for Kirk Cousins reviewing that, pros and cons. And the other review is my little puppy, Racy. 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 Come on. Come on, puppy. There's my little puppy. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into the video. Alright, so getting on to the video part. I'm creating the next playlist, which is called Players or People 2, which is... The other ones are going to be more of me bubbly and uh, happy and reviewing stuff, but this one is... Not gonna lie, it's not gonna be emotional, but it's gonna be for real with you, um, especially this first one. Um, this first one, there's a uh, guy by the name of Shaquem Griffin. He's been all over the news about the one-handed linebacker um, in the combine. So, but I think the problem with everyone's concept of him is, hey look, he's a one-handed linebacker. Let's sign him for morale. Let's do this. Well, they're overlooking two things. One, he has fought his whole life to play on the NFL field for to have the same chances as everyone else. He wants to be able to play. He wants to be a good fit for wherever he's going. And two is he's just a really good player in general. He was defensive in his defense player of the year in his conference. And so it's, you know, don't overlook the guy's skill, at, seriously. And here, I'm going to go through the story of Shaquem Griffin. So Shaquem is the twin brother of my Seattle corner, Shaquille Griffin. And um, he suffered when he was a baby a thing called amatic band syndrome. And um, it was so bad... Every time he'd fall and cut his hand, there'd be pain there. And it was lingering pain. It was pain he couldn't forget. And it was so bad. It, it was so bad because his hand didn't fully develop in the womb. It, you know, it, 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 was, it, was, it was very small compared to the normal baby hand. And it was, just got worse and worse. And... Until one day when he was four, the pain just kept growing and growing and growing until he was four. And Shaquille woke up in the middle of the night, saw his brother wasn't there. And um, Shaquem's mom went into the kitchen and saw Shaquem trying to get a knife to cut his own hand off. And uh, the pain was that bad. And he just he was like, Mommy, I want the pain to stop. I want it to stop. Just wanted to go away. So the next day, they took him to the hospital and they thought it was the right thing to do to amputate his hand. In my opinion, that'd probably be the best thing to do too. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on and that much pain is not good for you psychologically and mentally. It really isn't. And once it just builds and builds and builds, that's terrible. And, um,. So every time he'd want to do something, he'd become gr he he'd grow more independent as he'd go. So his mom would try to tie his shoelaces, and he'd he'd push her away and say, "No, I got this. I got this. I'll do it." Shakim learned how to tie his shoes faster and to button up his shirt faster than his twin brother Shaquille, and he became faster, really, and. It got to the point where um, he'd say, hey, I want to do something, and they'd try to find some amount of way for him to be able to do it. Whether it um, be someone standing there and steadying the barbell so he can do um, bench pressing, to really anything. And so he was a good athlete. He really was. Both of them were. And... And uh, so it, it, it really breaks my heart that everyone's 
overlooking how good of a basketball player he was. UCF, um, he played for UCF along with his twin brother. You want to know why that was? That was because no other college besides UCF that I know about would take him because he was one-handed linebacker. But um, slowly he'd grow, grow, and grow, and he'd get more and more and more, and it just it's it, it's it's truly heartbreaking for me to see someone work that much and get little effort and little ret ret retribution from it at that time, and it's. It's just, it, it, you know, it, 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 it hurts me inside. I have no faith in these colleges if they can't give someone like that a chance. And um, in his last year, he had 11 sacks and was named the Conference Defensive Player of the Year and is now going to the NFL and ran the 40 in one of the fastest 40s for a linebacker ever since they've been recording it. Um, so everyone has their wall to face. Everyone comes up to a wall, you know, along your journey. And um, you have to find a way to break through it. Shaquem's wall really was his hand. He was set back by the ability to not physically be able to do what he wanted to do. But he found a way to break through it, and if Shaquem can break through a wall like that, then why can't the rest of us? So, when you're thinking about it, why can't we do it? So, you know, don't count yourself out. And uh, I guess that's all for this video. I have a few more of these up. Um, this is actually one of the reasons why I started this channel, is because I'm very passionate about people knowing more than what they see on the field, actually going into the lives of these players. But that's all we have time in this video. So um, without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. And stay safe, everybody, because the roads have been pretty bad over here lately. I don't know about you guys, but stay safe, okay? Till the next time, that's number one, and I'm your host, Alan.